So YPO events start early. 6.50 in the morning, we're out. It's dark. My name's Pain in the Ass. This and this is? is Reddit. That was clear. Yeah, no, no, it's great book. Spins reading, Freedom Forage. And we're heading out to a precision machine products company called Micron. When you walk in the door, you can tell they are lean as, they're lean maniacs. The place is so When spotless. did you do the floors again? Oh, probably about four or five years ago. And how has that helped with cleaning and stuff? Oh, it helps tremendously. Yeah. Before, you know, yeah. we had this. Right. And this has been here since the building was built. And it just, you know, it permeates, everything, right? yeah, it permeates oil. Yep. And we can even take acid. The clean floors are just an outward sign of a beautiful culture, a lean culture. It's great to see. Dan shared a little bit of the history of the company um, and welcomed us. Yeah, huddle, huddle, huddle. 17 times a day, people formally put their heads together talking about it. When we started our journey, we would get together twice a week for very long week, and very few people talk. Now we get together very often. Everybody has a voice. Shared that perspective is everything. When you're digging, you could either be digging a ditch or you could be constructing a beautiful cathedral. Today in 2016, what you can see is they are living and promoting the American dream. It's absolutely awesome. You know, they're truly engaged, celebrating small improvements like this duct tape and rubber band. This is where everything from um, request for. It was great to see their scheduling boards, 100% employee owned. They were explaining them very well and could understand the reasoning for each of the colors and the codes. Uh, they actually look at every order and process it through this screening tool. We're going to push it through as soon as it comes in, and then uh, we'll be able to meet the ship deadline of Wednesday. But right now, until it does get here, it's red, even though we didn't have problems. Strong commitment to standard work, even for options for things that are on hold or other. They had these great little yellow, green, and red pins. They were magnetic and they could show the status of many different boards. They also showed visual cues of what it should look like when at the end of the day. And so everybody was responsible for cleaning. They had great little magnets and laminated pieces of cardboard to be able to post up in neat, orderly fashion right progress. Here. There's another schedule board over there for dumb machines over there. At a glance, you could see order quantity and time commitment. So basically quality uses this tool and demonstrates what happens on any given day. You can see there's no problems on the first, second, uh, third, fourth, fifth were off, the sixth, seventh, they had a problem that got internal quality disruption, and then on the twelfth they had a customer quality disruption. This is basically our workstation, so everything that we need to utilize the check parts and to set the job up is at this work. Employee ownership of quality was very clear. They had individual checks that they did on each piece. They would turn this basically blank into this part and they would cut it in half and test it. And so the kind of process is where we're, we're issued a challenge and we discover what our current conditions are for that challenge. This is impossible. This is never going to happen. Um. The challenge put in front of them was to train every single person within the next 30 to 45 days. They had massive requirements on each employee, and they had to keep and create all the different solutions to do it. So they were empowered to do it. They used this board to do it, and uh, just really cool to see all of their own work coming forward uh, to creatively solve this major challenge. These are wow cards, kind of like the Bruce Bucks in Cambridge, basically where people can recognize each other for a great job above and beyond. Ocean diagram, cross chart, X chart, I don't know, there's different buzzwords for this thing. But she's uh, taking a picture of it. <laughs> so they're just getting started with Hoshin Kondri, but it was very clear that they were passionate about it. We probably won't put you on a team the first quarter that you worked there. Each one of these teams has a very specific goal and it's measurable. So when these teams are finally done, please restate that. You can't work at Micron if you will not can a toilet. You can't work at Micron if you will not can a toilet. You know what, the Rat Patrol has been there for a while and it's cleaning bathrooms and every employee rotates from top to bottom to clean the toilets, to clean the areas of communal areas. What a powerful lesson. 
Lastly, we got together and shared our learnings across an aisle. It's called a zip line and a very powerful exercise. I uh, really enjoyed it and uh, got to um, listen very clearly to somebody else do the same for me and got to share my thoughts across the aisle. Unbelievable, Mike Ron. Great job. You guys nailed it. So next we went to Herman Miller, one of the absolute leaders in lean in the U.S. Some people say that they do lean better than the Toyota folks do, and uh, it sure did seem like that from, from the presentations and what we could see. They are flying through quality, flying through manufacturing. It just looks like a, a kata out there. This is a picture of their aileron chair, one of the most famous ones, and they've moved the production facility from 27,000 square foot to 3,500. They've gone from three lines to one, and they're producing at a faster pace. Incredible. You know, one of the things they did for us in the tour, which I really love, was they had um, headphones for us. And so we could hear really well during the whole thing. We couldn't take pictures except for back in the training room. So Matt Long was our guide and uh, a gracious guide. It's really one second, one breath, one motion. You're doing that many, there are so many small little things that make you guys number one. So if you haven't gone to see Herman Miller in action, it's phenomenal. Next, we went to Cascade Engineering, which is a tier one supplier for Herman Miller. And they laid out their lean journey over the last four years, really a top-down approach. So setting a clear strategy and vision and clarifying goals and objectives at the top level for five-year objectives. They are a B Corp, so their triple bottom line Results were throughout, pervasive throughout all their messaging. We talk about our daily board. This is our daily board here. So, so this is one of their operational huddle areas where they can show objectives of their operating efficiency and effectiveness and uh, daily quality metrics and safety metrics. Um, they walk through that with as a team. This is Mike, the plant manager, showing us, and it was great to see the results that they review on a daily basis. Um, these were some nice laminated cards with backing, uh, a great idea for us back at Cambridge. Well, a particular um, degator that we have, so what are the solutions for that? And then we, we, we either assign a team to it, that sort of thing, and then we put it under the category and then we have an effect, there's an effect delivery. And then once a week, so this gets moved over there. Yep. So then out to the floor to look at rapid improvement events. In place. It's been a well, we got ready for this quarter a couple weeks later. These kind of events have to be completely done by the end of that week. But what you're looking at here is you kind of see fresh paint that they still got to get a little bit of the, of the overspray taken care of. But this all just happened Saturday. Um, and significant improvement. Now, I don't know if that's going to be that every day, but just seeing it that one day was definitely going to attract this 30. Close integration with Herman Miller as a supplier was evident throughout. Mike was saying we had to be bronze. Some cells have to be bronze for Hijunka, for, for success and for standard work. Not every press for, for Hijunka, but the lint, lint presses here are. So these are the lint that we make for the vertical plant. And essentially, you know, the standard work is essentially these tools right here. Tools are the tools that help us get our, our improvements. Understanding where we're sitting now and then how we can and where we need to make improvements. So you'll see um, value add, non value add, wait time, that sort of thing. We'll also have any quality alerts here. We'll have it shows we haven't got to get going. So thanks to the whole Cascade Engineering team. Next, we were on to Ventra. And Ventra is a bumper manufacturer for all of the major auto manufacturers. Going from back to the 60s and 70s, 80s, 90s, and to today, they supply over 90% of the market. Their lean journey had started out of absolute necessity as Ford was going to rapidly increase production requirements on them and they needed to innovate around it. One thing, no pictures on the floor, so this was just a snapshot before we came back in. 
Uh, lots of innovative approaches out there on the floor and uh, really appreciate their uh, investment of time into our lean tour. Thanks Ventra. Next was my favorite by far speaker, Ari Weinsweig. I'm sure I messed up his name. He is the co-founder and CEO of Zingerman's Community Businesses. Collectively they do over 60 million dollars in sales in Ann Arbor, Michigan serving great food with great service. He laid out 12 natural laws of businesses. What, what he says is, if businesses understand these and follow these, they will grow. Number one, be inspiring with a strategic sound vision which will lead to greatness. Number two, you need to give your customers some really compelling reasons to buy from you. Number three, without good finance, you will fail. Number four, people do their best work when they're part of a really great organization. Number five, if you want staff to give great service, give great service to staff. Number six, to get great performance, you need to give clear expectations and great training tools. Number seven, successful businesses do things other people know they should do but generally don't do it. Number eight, to get to greatness, you've got to keep getting better all the time. Continuous improvement is absolutely necessary. Number nine, success means you get better problems. Number ten, strengths lead to weaknesses. Your greatest strengths are your biggest weaknesses. Number eleven, it takes longer to make something great happen than you think. Number twelve, Great organizations are appreciative and the people in them have more fun. It is together that those things work and he just laid those out. It was so beautiful. His smile was so natural. We learned so much. We all bought books and can't wait to read them. Thank you Ari for sharing your heart with us for people and how you grow your businesses and uh, inspiring us to be better leaders. Thank you. And our key box. Well, a brown bag. Thank you. Thank you. Nice wrap. Well, Kelly.